What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Juice, man. HQ of Team Juice. Headquarters. Captain Ron Studios. Looking, looking stout. Looking good. Are we gonna are we gonna change anything? I feel like we should grow and like change the look or something. No, nah, we ain't changing nothing. We got some plaques we could put in here. Got a few yeah, plaques. What the hell? Oh man, I, I didn't want to complain, but I'm with you. I was looking forward to the trophy. Yeah, man, me and Shane were those of you that didn't see, we were fortunate enough to win the Bass Champs event this past weekend. Did something really incredible, really special. Uh, weighed in 39 and a half pounds. And uh, one big bass with one over 10 pounds. And we've worked our tails off. And uh, we've seen with our own eyes bags weighed in like that. Several of our buddies have um, weighed in. Um, you know, there's probably no telling how many bags around that 40 mark has been weighed in. But since around since we've been fishing around Well, I mean, here, you can list been, them. Well, no, there should there could be some that I don't know about. So no, but I mean, like in the major team events, I mean, I'm sure there's been some. I don't know. Usually, if you somebody rings the bell like that, it. I mean, Danny and them are obviously. Uh, Danny and them have had two over Danny, forty. Danny, Brian, Shook. That one bag that went in Texas Team Show will probably never ever be touched. It was like 49, 49 30 something, thirty two oh. maybe. I mean, did they weigh in at like ten a.m.? That one probably won't be touched. No, Derek has weighed in um, a forty and a thirty nine. Forty and a thirty nine. One a Toyota. One a BFL. Um, uh, Clayton Bowler, Albert Collins, weighed in 40. 40. That's a tough one because that was in the summer. That was like a May. Yeah. That was stout. That's really stout for that time of year. Uh, uh, Marshall Hughes had 38. I mean, that's a, yep. that's a mega bag, especially solo. That's mm-hmm. a, that's a really big bag. Yeah. I mean, there's been several, you know, 30. 30 to 36-ish pounds back. I remember Phil Marks one and one with, like, 36. Yeah, 36, 37. Uh, but there's been those. But, you know, just those, they're special. And uh, for us to do that with the amount of time we put in and uh, how hard we work, man, it was really a, a blessing. And, um, man, I hope we can do it again. Yeah. I mean, back to the hard work thing, it's – uh, to your point, we've we've spent a lot of time, and I'm not just talking this year. I'm talking, this is like a culmination of. Mm. I mean, how long we've we been fishing team tournaments together? Like full time. There was that one year, maybe three or three years. I think this is on long? A previous podcasts. Third third year, two years, three years, three years. Yeah, I think we're on our third year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so why it worked for me when I owned Tackle Addict? Yeah, that was actually a while ago. Yeah, yeah. We jumped in a couple little derbies just here and there, just kind of dabbling around, couple, feeling, feeling yeah. each other out, seeing uh, – that sounds weird. <laughs> uh, just seeing if we like fishing together. And then uh, I thought we were going to fish together the next season. And he's like, hey, man, I'm going to be fishing with Cody Barshinger, my uh, college partner. I was like, all right, cool. I remember how it all worked. I yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I remember. Well – that was also the year that uh, Keith and I won the shootout. Oh. You could have been there, brother. No. That's a whole different story. I couldn't have. <laughs> Where were you? You, weren't, did you, you don't remember? I, I think you talked about, we talked about fishing that one together or something like that. No, because it was the next year. Because then, then the next year. The next year we were going to fish. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was okay. 2021. Yeah, I remember. That was 2021. Yeah. September of 2021. Then the next year, 2022, you and I were fishing together as full-time team partners. Yeah. But Keith was like, no, no, no. Yeah, because y'all won it the year before. Yeah, we had won it the year before. Keith wanted to, to try to repeat, uh, which we failed miserably at. I didn't think we could have checked in that one. But yeah, man, it's a culmination of a lot of work. Years. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's, it's been years, and we've, you know, uh, that's actually a good topic. We should do, like, a full episode on that one day, like get it, get a couple other teams in here to talk about it, how hard it is to find a good team partner um, that that you gel with, you know what I mean? And how you how well you fish together, and you got to kind of learn. I mean, every, every year is a little different, and especially with the new technology. Yeah, man, everybody has their own ways of doing stuff, and yeah, man, like, I mean, it, it's not just, uh, you know, the years, I mean, I just, I can't even think of how many idle hours and Trolling motor hours. I don't even want to know, honestly. Um, How many hours you got on your motor? 
Well, I got that engine in uh, December. Of 2022. Of, of 2023. Uh, no, 2022. 2022. Yeah. So I've had it for a year and... Uh, Not like quite a year and a half. Four months or yeah. so. And I've got like 430 <laughs> on that one. But I sold my 2019 cat with 870. So, uh, yeah, man, it's a lot of time, a lot of hard work. Um, and it was it was just a special, special day. We, we didn't, uh, we did not pull up to one spot and get right. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't think we caught single fish. Well, let's run through the fish. I don't think we caught a single fish on the same spot. Let's run through the day. I mean, we didn't catch, I mean, we caught, Several fish, but we didn't catch, like, it's not like we caught 50, 60 fish. Absolutely not. We probably caught, what, 15? Mm, yeah. hmm Yeah. So, start us off. Yeah, morning so we starts. Uh, started, started the morning off. Boat 102. Yeah. Never um, get a good boat draw. We weren't really stressed over boat number. We, we've been kind of, you know, we've been fishing since the beginning of January, and we haven't really had anybody in our way all year and hopefully it stays that way so i mean technically we've kind of been on these this this area or this deal yeah this was whatever technique whatever you want to call it uh it's not the first time we we fished this place we weren't really about boat number and uh we pulled to the first spot and it was a uh, non-tournament angler that uh (laughs) ended up making our morning who uh was running uh don't know who they are uh, but, yeah, they ran right over the top of where we were casting. Oh, they shut down on it. We exchanged uh, pleasantries. Pleasantries. And no, no, no. So, they were. Nothing they were, crazy, but we, we they told were them. They were running, like, and we're, like, waving. like Yeah, we're waving them together. they like, go this way. You're, you're about to run over the taller fish. And, and potentially, and, they were kind of aiming at us at one point, too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we weren't like, do they see us? What are they doing? And then they just start running. And then I guess because we were waving, they shut down, thinking mm-hmm. we're, like, trying to, like, hey, we need help. Maybe that's what they thought. So they shut down, and I, I just said, no, no swear words. I just said, hey, man, you went right over the top of where we're throwing. Yep. And he, he, he literally, this is what he says. He says, whatever, man. And they leave. And they get up on pad. And it wasn't long after that at all uh, that Shane set the hook on our first one on a jig. And I um, believe it was, like, Probably a three and three quarters. Yeah, something like that, three and a half. But not quite four. I will say uh, there was more down there. We could not catch another one because probably because the boat ran over the top of their head. So we had to get out of there and uh, ran to our next little deal. And What was the next fish? Believe it. Was that was it the next one a jig fish? Or a, no. Okay, so the next one was a uh, light line uh, spinning rod uh, fish. And I think that one was a... Uh, well, we tried the jigs first. Yeah, I actually tried cranking and jigging. Yeah, you were cranking, I was jigging. Um, and then uh, got a little finesse on them and uh, made one come up and get right. and Ate it pretty close to the boat, too. I think that was a seven-pounder. It, it was like a heavy six. It's a big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, po- potentially a post spawner or an old fish. We're not really sure yet. No, that was on the you're, the seven and a half is the one you're thinking of. That's on the... Okay. Uh, we get her in the... No, this was big head, skinny body, for sure. Yeah. Um. Once again, more fish there. Couldn't get any of the other ones to bite. Um, went to our next little deal. And, and when we say spots, it's it's not like really just spots. It's kind of an area technique. We're kind of looking and fishing around as well. Um, so then we go to the next little deal and next little area, drop the trolling motor and uh, catch. A, I don't know if this will make it to weigh in or it not. Was, this was the one. This was our last coal. This was the five and five and a quarter pounder on a jig. Okay, yeah, I caught it on a jig. Yep, cracked her, cracked her. Yeah, oof, so good. Again, and, uh, more than one fish. Again, around the area. Didn't get another bite. Um, and we're we're moving fast. Yeah, I yeah, mean, we're, uh, we th- we're we're we're, uh, we're seeing what's going on down this there. Is, on, this is like thirty minutes of fishing. Yeah, we're seeing what's going on in there, and we're not stupid. We're not going to try to make something happen that's not, you know. We're moving and grooving. Yeah, so we decide to cycle back to starting spot. Now that uh, it's, No, we hit one. We did. We made one more stop. I caught a spot, and I think you caught another little one that, like, maybe would have measured, but we're like, we're not. Yeah, measure. we went back to a 
close to that area. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. And um, shot the trolling motor and uh, kind of was looking around and saw another one. And uh, I think I caught that one first, right? You yeah, caught a you, big one. Yeah. Again, we're just, we're trying to force something that's not happening. Or at least I was at first, you know. And then in the video, yeah. all this is on video. Yeah, we got it all on GoPro. I think at that point I um You picked up you picked up the spinny pole. Picked up the again. spinny pole again and I caught a seven. It was like a seven and a half. That one was quarter. big head, skinny oh body. She should have been giant. Wait till you see the video. This thing I mean, comes up and like throws her head around. And I'm thinking eight. Eight, nine. Nine. Big one. Big, big, big one. No body. Rail thin. Super um, long. Longer than the She other. looked like me with like Shane's head. <laughs> That's a great way of explaining <laughs> that it. kind of was. That's a great way to explain it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> put my head on Wyatt's body. That's what it looked like. And then uh, after that, kind of just you know, didn't pull the trolling motor, just kind of moving around, looking around. Uh, Shane caught a dink. And after that, you'll see all this in, on video. So yeah, yeah. you know we're not lying about any of it. Um, we need to try to enhance the audio because some of the audio is funny. Yeah, probably not enhance all of it. No, there's a lot of it that cannot be. <laughs> no, it's a lot of bad stuff going on. We're just uh, just excited. Just excited. excited. Y'all know how it is, man. Y'all know how it is. Uh, yeah. And then I'm sitting down doing something, and as soon as I stand back up, Shane's telling me like he's working a a big one, right? And I look down at the screen, <laughs> I'm like stupid. That thing looks stupid, right? <laughs> and uh, I see her. I see her coming up. I mean, before Shane sets the hook, and this is on film, mm-hmm. I turn around and grab the net before he ever. Oh, he's running it. for the net. I hadn't even said net yeah. or anything. I hadn't even said and the he, hook. And he gets her. Mm. And we get her in the boat, and it's a nine. Probably, I don't even know what she was. On. She was a nine. She was a nine. Yeah. Big one. And uh, I think at that point we had That was a, fish number five. That was number five. At that point, our smallest fish was at three and three quarter, and I think we had a. Three, a five, a six, a seven, and a nine. Something around there. With some change, you know. I'm just. Yep. We run to another little deal. Another area. I mean, decent little run. Nothing like crazy, but we had to like run a little ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We wanted to get rid of that three pound. We knew we got rid of three pound things. As a matter of fact, I think I found this spot on Friday. So it wasn't even, you know. But at, yeah, it was a new spot. Yeah. At that point, though, we had 31 on our scales. Yeah. Because we weighed them before we left. Yeah, that was pretty early in the morning. Yeah. We went over to this spot because we were pretty confident we could coal there. And that's exactly uh, what we did. Um, we pulled up there and uh, fired up there and on the spinning pole. <laughs> and uh, caught one that was six. Six. Got rid of that three and three quarters. At that point, we we're had 33, 33 about 34. Pounds, 15 ounces. Yeah. And I don't know what it is with my Bubba scale, and I was telling him this. Yeah. Every, it weighs every fish about a third of a pound light. So when I go to weigh in, it's I got a pound and a half more than what my scale says. Mm-hmm. Like, automatically. I remember telling him, like, this is going to be a pound and a half more. It says 33 pounds, 15 ounces. We got 35 and a half. Yeah. Is what I kind of had figured. You know, we had 34, 35. We, we had a good – it was early, dude. 8, uh, 15, 8, 30. Yeah, it was Hour early. and a half into fishing, maybe. It was early. And, uh, I mean, I I was having the mo- – <laughs> Shane's going to Shane's gonna tell you all about how I was acting. Was, but I was having the most exciting morning of my life, as you can imagine. <laughs> uh, me and Shane have had many of days where we could have cracked 30, a pa- 30 pounds in practice, but we've never got to do it in a tournament. We came close. Um, several times, and we've caught mid-20s several times, low-20s, all that good jazz. But we knew we had well over 30, and we had a pretty good feeling the tournament was, well. I don't I don't think we felt good. Yet. I didn't feel – I didn't. I was feeling pretty good, but I didn't – you never know out here. Scary out here. Like we just talked about these bags. Okay, yeah. so you got Isles. He's out there. Yeah, he is out there. Him and Steven are out Derek there. Derek and Bonds. Derek and Bonds are Hayden out there. Hayden Heck is out there. Hayden Heck's out there. Yep. Uh, who else? We're missing somebody. I mean, multiple teams, dude. I yeah. mean, there's so many teams a lot of people. that are just, you just never know when they're going to bring in a big, big bag like that. Yep. And it really uh, hadn't happened yet on Rayburn, other than Marshall's bag of Marshall. 38. Yep. 
Other than that, there hadn't been any 30 backs, which mm-hmm. is not normal for Rayburn this time of year. Right. Normally, there's a couple 30s, mm-hmm. at least one. Mm-hmm. And we kind of knew we had the sneaking feeling like there's going to be another 30 pound back. Yeah. Like I was feeling really good. And um, <laughs> I had to go uh, drop Shane off at about 9 30. So this is an interesting part of our day. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this was approved by the tournament director. We cleared this before we signed up. Before we even signed up for the tournament. To make sure we could do it. Call the tournament director. So let's back up to that story. So I All call right. Wyatt. Like we got back from, I don't know where we were. Conroe. Oh, yeah. Ugh. After that beating. Ugh. Not in a great mood for fishing, right? I'm like, hey, man, uh, we're not fishing champs this weekend, are we? And he said, oh, yeah, we are. Oh, yeah, we're fishing. And I was like, man, we got a belt the following weekend. Like, I kind of want to just lay, lay off our stuff. And he was 100% right when he said, dude, we need to take every opportunity we got. Because so far this year, the opportunities have not lined up. Mm-hmm. It, the weather, the yeah. wind, something is water level, something has freaking knows, something dude. has messed us up. Yeah, the water level is one. The first champs wind, wind and hard hard cold front. That was a miserable tournament. It was mm-hmm. cold, windy, wind was blowing the wrong direction for this for where we wanted to fish. It just didn't work out. We ended up catching a decent bag, caught a good cut a check, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next tournament was after all the rain and the lake came up. Six. I think feet. that was the belt. We did catch a good bag day one. Yeah, we caught a big, big back day one, and <sighs> that was when the the water was rising, the fish were pushing shallow, and we mm-hmm. were just out there deep, just begging for a couple to hang out, and they didn't. But uh, no, it just felt like nothing's really lining up. And he was right when he said, like, if you look at the forecast and you look at current conditions, like this is about as good of a weekend as we're yeah. gonna have to. And it was to crack a big bag, mm-hmm. and, and he it was, was right. So, it was. but. What yep. I was getting at is I had – my son's got soccer tryouts. Well, when you fish on Saturdays, I mean, you miss a lot of stuff. I mean, it's something that, that unfortunately, we sacrificed to do this. And even when I did the Opens last year, I missed games and, and events and some things like that. And I tried to – when I'm home, I try to, to make as much as I can. I told him even before, even before, I was like, hey, man, if we fish champs, just let you know, I'm getting out of the, tr- out of the boat for a couple hours to go watch my kids' soccer So tryout. watch Brooks, yep. And, but that had to be approved from the tournament director. That's yeah, yeah, what I'm yeah. getting at. And Shane called Jeff, got it approved. He said, perfect, no problem. All you got to do is when you drop Shane off, call me, tell me around what you got. That's why we weighed him. And I'm glad we filmed. I didn't film for this reason because I really don't care what anybody thinks. Uh, obviously, <laughs> we passed a polygraph, and I don't care what anybody's got to say. Uh, but I'm glad I filmed because we got this whole day on GoPro. Yeah, And uh, so we dropped Shane off at 9.30. He's going to be gone approximately about an hour. I'm going to come pick hour him back and up. Yeah. And Jeff said when he pick him, when I pick him back up, let him know what we got. So we go to drop, I go to drop Shane off. I said, hey, let's call Jeff. Call Jeff. Tell him we got about 34 pounds. He said, holy crap. <laughs> it's was, a lot easier to get out of the boat and yeah. go take a break when you got 34 pounds. That's right. Boat. And I went back out by myself for a little bit. Um, I got it on film. I caught like a three and a half. Uh, and a little one or something. Didn't call. Kind of hard to call a five-pounder at that point. Go pick chain back up. Call Jeff again. Let him know what we got. Um, no calls. Same weight. And uh, we go back to fishing. And, you know, we're fishing for a while. I mean, we went a while without... Ah, I, actually, that's not true. We were kind of catching fish through we were, those hours. We were passing up targets, too. Well, we also caught a three and a half. And you remember that... Yeah, and okay. then we caught a four and three quarter. That was sort of later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As the day went on, Shane will tell you I started feeling uneasy. It honestly was a little annoying. At about eleven, twelve, you know. No, no, no. Well, it was way before that. Well, I guess I no, got no, back in the boat at eleven. 11. So uh, we're talking eleven, twelve, one. This time starting to weigh on me. I'm checking these fish constantly. Every I got seven minutes. I got fin clips on the bottom of them, making sure they're staying up and down straight. They're doing great, but I'm checking on them. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, the only way we might lose this tournament is if we don't get these suckers weighed in alive. But we weren't. But I didn't feel good that we had it won for sure because I didn't think we had enough weight. So You just don't know. You just you don't know. know, right? Yeah. So, so it, it go, we go hours. And it's getting later and later. We're not doing it until 3.30. And it's like what? He's got to be pushing to a clock. No, no, no. One thirty. So he's quiet, and I, I think I said a couple times, like, dude, 
Like, snap out of it, man. Yeah, not. I'm not the talking. Sun, the sun is shining. It's 75 degrees. It's I'm a beautiful day on Rayburn. We've got to go everywhere we want to go. We've caught fish everywhere we want to go. I'm like, dude, how can you be upset? He's like, I'm just nervous, man. I'm nervous. I was nervous. I'm nervous. I was nervous. I'm nervous. I'm like, I get it. I'm nervous, too. He's like, oh, what? About weighing in, uh, we both agreed we're not we're not going in yet. If if one fish would have shown a sign of being in trouble, we'd have been away. It'd have been we'd have been going. Shane even told me the guy the boat. He said, "You let me know if you see one going bad, and I'll meet you there. We will weigh these jokers in. Yep, we'll get it done. So fish care is a big deal for us, you know. We had juice and we had fin clips. I mean, they were chilling, dude. Every time I would even begin to touch one like i think i put my hand in one's mouth and she bit me so hard i was like oh dude these things are pissed oh off. they were and it way and they were pissed off they were beautiful you can tell in the pictures like a great color so that's all going on it's getting towards the end of the day and shane's like i remember saying like where would we go if we had to catch a 10 pounder i'm like bro if i knew the answer to that we would do it all the time <laughs> i have no idea he's like well i got this one little deal let's go check it out got a little live scoping deal he takes me somewhere. I'm like, what are we doing here? <laughs> I'm just sitting thinking, we literally are wasting time. We just need to go weigh in. To and I think Shane, yeah, you ended up catching a dink. And that really was like, I was like, oh, God, what I are we doing here? Dinks here? And then he, I think he drugged Charlotte. You're like, let's go to this other little deal right close by, right? We got on a plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I told you I'd Oh, no, that was. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, so I caught there, seven in here. And I pan out there, I see one, catch it, good one, four and three quarter. Does not help, but definitely helps my confidence in the air a little bit more. Shane just said he caught big ones here. We ain't ever fished it together, ever. I've never t- I've never brought him there. He's probably like one or, well, first, I know why I didn't bring you there, because you you only go there when you got 35 pounds. But. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't, I don't oh, know, yeah. man. I've, I, I don't even know why I ever fished this spot, but I've caught, I've caught like a, I caught a seven in there last year, this exact time of year. Yeah, well. I catch that one, it doesn't help, and I'm kind of like, dang, man. It's going to be freaking hard to help us, but i got a little more confidence in the area. It's getting later in the day, man, and uh, it's this, hard wasn't, to stay in this it. wasn't long after that fish. Three minutes. And I I think... You were on the trolling motor. Yeah, I was on the trolling motor, and I pan out there, and I freaking see this giant dot suspended all by herself, and I was like... Shane literally was like, what is that? Oh, I'm gonna, I want to turn the audio up. These like, are the little audio clips that we he's need. He's like, what is that? Is that a bass? And by the time he said that, I was already, I done thrown at this shaker. Hey. And I got her turned, and she got vertical, and Shane's like, you ain't got her? And I was like, no, she ain't, she ain't freaking bit it yet, dude. And then, boom, she bites, I bow up. And I immediately say, giant. Get the net, giant. I'm watching his rod tip, though, and I'm like, this thing is like, Boom, boom, boom. I immediately think catfish. big catfish. Yeah. Big and he catfish. was like, is it a bass? Is it a catfish? And then she shows herself. She jumps about and I'm like, 15 oh feet from God. the boat. And I'm like, it's, I was like, I think it's a 10. And Shane's like, it might be bigger. <laughs> and then she starts dogging me. Peel and drag. And he's like, it's $36,000 fish, man. I don't even know why I said and that. And I literally said, shut up. I said, shut up. I don't, like, I don't know. And I'm like, because I don't know this area. I'm like. What's down there, dude? What's down there? We're like 23 foot of water. I'm like, what's down there? Is there anything timber? What's down there? He's like, there's nothing down there. And I, as soon as I said, zzz, zzz, just back that drag off. And just, zzz. and I, she might have touched bottom in 23 foot. I think she did it twice. She dogging me. And the next time she surfaced, she was in the net. And uh, you'll, I'm sure some of you have already seen my story I posted. But if those of you who haven't seen that footage yet, I get a little crazy. <laughs> I get a little wild. <laughs> we act like complete idiots throughout the day, but I literally, I man, I don't care. That's just pure raw emotion, man. Rightfully so, though, man. Like we, it was kind of funny because like the whole afternoon after I got back in the boat was like, all we need is a ten, man. All we need is a ten. That's it. Ten pound. That's what she was, by the way. She's a ten. I mean, you can't write. You can't make that up. And then we went to weigh. Yeah, he's after that. He was like, no more waiting. <laughs> no, I'm done waiting. It's like one fifty. We're doing it at 3.30. I said, dude, no way. We're done. He said, nope. I don't care what you say. Yep. Jerk the trolling motor. I'll make gone. sure. i just make sure my dad's What if we could have fished around there and caught another 10? I didn't need her. We go look for this weekend. Yeah. It was stupid, dude. 
It's stupid. The footage is stupid. The day was stupid. It was insane, man. It's just a blessing. I mean, it just... Yeah. We got a really big... I mean, this is probably the biggest team tournament of the year coming up now. Brandon Belt Fishing $100,000 Grand Slam starts on Thursday. Yeah. It's only a few days away. Well, before we get on that topic, just I just want to say thank you. I think you already have, too. To everybody yep. that's reached out, you know, on Facebook, Instagram, phone calls, text. Man, appreciate it. It's cool, man. We got a cool sport. Uh, I think most, I would say 99% of dudes are excited for other guys when they see that kind of bag. You know, they just understand, like – those that have done it, obviously, we appreciate it and respect it. And those that haven't are just like, man, I can't wait for my turn. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, a um, lot, of, lot of good feedback and respect from from our fellow competitors and friends out there that we fish against Absolutely. every weekend. So, appreciate like, that. Like I mentioned, man, um, yeah, we had it all to ourselves all year. We'll see. Let's keep it that way. We'll see starting Thursday. <laughs> I think there's going to be scum. We got dotted hard. Uh, Yeah, we got dotted. Shane, when he caught that nine, there, this dude, like, close. I didn't know somebody was there. Close. And circled the boat and looking at us, looking at his grass. And I was like, oh, my goodness. So, I don't know for sure if he did. But we'll find out Thursday. And, um, you know, and if, you know, you're wondering where that might be, I got a little video. I know who it is because he sent me a friend request. I got a little video on my phone of that boat. I'm not gonna name names. Maybe, maybe he was just just know admiring a, a fellow Skeeter owner. Just know, we, you know, we everybody knows, everybody knows some whole some whole jumping that goes on all across the country, not just Rayburn. It happens at Rayburn, but uh, we won't let it happen lightly. Like <laughs> it will be, man. I'm telling you, it will be exposed. It's an interesting topic. We can get on that topic on another episode I d- about you know, just, what's right and wrong and what's ethics. I know I know certain, you know, people can find stuff and legitimately so, but um there's not going to be any more getting away with uh doing shady stuff. Um uh, not to, not to team juice. You will This be guy exposed. was not in the tournament. I want to preface that. No. He was by himself. I'm just talking about in general. In general. Yeah, 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 in general um Bottom line is there's a right and wrong way to do things. If yep. I get it, it's exciting to watch somebody catch a big one. It's it's uh, maybe there's just a lot of people that just don't know that you wouldn't go do that. But there, we would never. Mm-mm. We've we, there's been instances where we know of places that fish have been caught that we've fished before. Yep, and we have laid off of it. Um, because out of respect for the angler that is catching them. In that area, it's just well, they got to it first. Yeah, they found the fish there first, so you know we're gonna kind of lay off of it, let them, let them, yep. let them do their thing. And we've had and, anglers do that for us as well. Yeah, yeah, it's we just, did. It's just how it is, man. Uh, and then we've had anglers that did not do that for us. Yep. But I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, that tournament ain't started yet. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope everybody's respectful and. Everything and not. hope everybody has a good turn. Now let's talk about the turn. You this will week. be exposed <laughs> by the power of our eleven hundred followers. Don't let the freaking juice followers come at you, man. <laughs> we got some freaking supporters, dude. Uh, East Texas. East it was a, Texas, baby. It was a great week of fishing for East Texas. I mean, Golly, they smashed here we are them. talking about our bag and like. 30 bags was like the norm over there yep. on Fork. That was ridiculous. That was ridiculous. They smashed. Trey McKinney got real close to Paul Elias. Woo! Real close. He went closer than anybody thought. I bet you he would. So. No, that was uh, that was a very, very impressive. All top 10 century cracked belts. the century belt. That's <laughs> insane. Did they even have enough belts, or was everybody holding up the same one, taking a picture? Oh, they, had, they probably knew. No. Nah. There would have been more than 10 if they let more guys fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There would have been more than 10. It's stupid, dude. They smashed him. And you know what? Good for Trey McKinney. Rookie. Uh, 19 years old. Just turned 19. Just turned 19. Just fish the just Opens. Just turned 19. Like. Qualified. I think on Tuesday or something. Qualified through the Opens last year. Yeah. Five uh, of the top 10 were rookies. Might want to get ready for that. Yeah, uh, and we'll get into more of this. We got a guest coming. We're going to record, let's say, Monday. We'll post this episode tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, you're going to go on Tackle Talk Live tomorrow? Tomorrow, yeah. 
Man, are we going to talk about this four phase sonar deal or not? Uh, there were some comments about us. Okay. On the Bass Champs page, as well as some other. Do you want to read posts? one? No, I ain't worried about reading it. I'm just saying, golly, man. At what point do we give it up on the forward facing sonar deal? At what point do we just give it up? Here's, here's, man, I don't know. I, I'm i not going to get beat by it. That's bottom line. I, I'm going to be honest. I enjoy catching fish with it. Absolutely. We, we weighed all five. And I don't feel dirty about it. I don't feel dirty. Now, the comments about the asterisks on the win, if you think you can go catch, <laughs> if you think it's just easy just to go out there and catch a 30 big, pounds, yeah. 20 pounds, Looking it's at not it. that easy. Mm-mm. It is not easy. We have, we've we been working on it now. I wouldn't say – I would say we've invested more time in it this year. No, yeah. Uh, because we saw the trend. We saw – we see we see the new the new crew coming in that are learning and adapting this new technology quicker, but it's just like let's take let's use this as an example. It's just like any other new technique, right? When a new technique would come out, the pros that adapted to that technique first did well. Oh yeah, this is no different. Who this got, is a yeah. tool, yep. and it's a technique. And there's multiple techniques that can be applied using this tool. Mm-hmm. And if you're refusing to adapt to it, you're getting spanked and i i i i don't like it because i do think i'm torn a little bit because there are it's taking a little bit of the learning curve out of fishing yes you don't need 10 20 30 years of fishing experience to get to the elite level now the learning no. curve is like you can learn so fast you can get good really really fast yep. because you can learn fish behavior you can fish like this you can but they're using a variety of baits. I mean, I know everybody's thinking the little ball head minnow is like the deal. There which, has been plenty of those exceptions throughout the years, though. But there was big fish caught without four bait. faces on our. Yeah, yeah. Jigs. Jacob Wheeler, Brandon Paul, and it. Those guys came up young, like out the gate swinging. Yeah. So, it's happened. KVD was a young man, yeah. beating on all all the older guys' heads, man. Yeah. There wasn't no complaining then. I mean, I just. I I'm hate sure it. Was. I hate I feel for these guys that have taken the time to get good with it and worked, worked for what they've uh for for what they're doing with it. They didn't just turn it on and oh well I grew up with computers and an iPad, so I'm good at it. No. No. It's not how it works, dude. And to yeah. be honest, you don't look, look because people say, Oh man, you gotta do it. Gotta do it now. I think there's definitely places like Toledo Bend and uh, Lake Fork where we just saw the elites go. and We knew that exactly how that was going to be won. Oh, we knew before it went there. And there is places where they are using forward-facing sonar that we had no idea that it would play as much as it has, like Okeechobee in the rim ditch. Okeechobee uh, on the spawning flats. Scott with perspective, Martin's video. Uh, look, you can still do good without it, but don't complain when – you know, you had that opportunity, um, especially at the top of the sport, dude. The top of the sport. When you have that opportunity to get that technology and just put in some work with it. Learn it. Adapt like you always have all the years that you've been fishing. And that's the way it's always been, man. And I um, I freaking hate it for some of those guys. I really do. It's it's not cool for... for uh, for them to have that kind of attitude and look on it. But, to be real, LiveScope has been out for a freaking while now. Yeah. How long has that thing been out I'm now? Not, let's, let's exclude the original Panoptics. It was... It was... Wasn't it's gotten huge in the last three, two or three years. 30, the 32. Yep. was like the first... LVS That's 32 a while, was like dude. the first one. It was a while ago. Yeah, I want to say that was 2019. Been a while. Yeah. So... Look, I know I'll probably get a lot of backlash for speaking my mind about it, but this is just my opinion, and just and honestly, it's just the way it is. Because uh, if you're not choosing to adapt to it, and there's certain events where you don't have to, there are 110 percent there's certain events, Sabine rivers and Potomac rivers, and there's places where you don't need it, and you you don't have to adjust to it. But when you go to a place like Lake Fork, 
and Toledo Bend and, and, and places where you know, you know before you go there that it's going to play, and you refuse, man, it's hard for me to feel bad because they know. Yeah. You know it's coming. And <clears throat> I don't know. It's like, tough. Like I said in my original statement, I refuse. Like, I'm a competitor. I, I do this because I enjoy competing. It's just like any game you play, whether you're playing board games, whether you're playing chess, checkers, clue, whatever. If that's the game we're playing, I'm going to be competitive at it. If the game now is forward-facing sonar, I'm going to make damn sure I'm competitive at it, or I'm not going to put my name in the hat. And it's pretty fun. It's actually pretty dang fun. <laughs> it's actually really freaking fun. I mean, I don't know how many of you have seen did, a... Did all of our weight come off a spinner rod? I think it did. Yeah, probably. I think it did. One on a jig might have made it, but more I than likely... I don't think it did. 39 and a half pounds on a spinner rod at Sam Raver. Light line. And we watched every single one of them eat it. So. Now. To tell, you can't tell me that watching a 9 and 10 pounder eat your bait is not fun. It was very fun. <laughs> it was a lot of I fun. Look, I, I look forward to doing it <laughs> on Thursday. I hope it happens again. But, man, I just, it's such a crazy, it's so crazy. There's just, the negativity is getting a little old. The negativity is getting a little old. I mean, if, if uh, I just don't, it's not as, I've spent a lot of time with it now, and it's not as easy as everybody thinks it is. It's not easy to do. It's really not. I mean, you're right. You're 100% right about the learning curve, Dale. I mean, is there a reason that, uh, out of the nine qualifiers for the new the new rookies this year, is a reason it's the youngest. Yeah, average age. Yes. Okay, so if you take it away, are all these guys in the elites? No, maybe not. They're not. I'm sorry, they're not. I think but, they still compete. But, I think they still compete more than but, what people give them credit for. But they are playing within the rules. They're playing within. <laughs> they're playing within with what's going on. So if you're not wanting to participate in the game that's going on, I, I don't. If know. If they make a rule. I think there's going to be some changes next year. Listen, a a a restriction is one thing. A rule totally getting rid of it is insane. I bet you. I bet you we will see a league spin off without it. Insane. I think blows my mind. I think morale is low with some of the some of the veterans of the sport. And I think you're going to see a spinoff league. That's just a prediction. I don't know that. I don't have any insider information. I just think. I just know some guys that are buddies of mine that are great fishermen and have had great careers and will continue to have great careers are not really thrilled with it. And I don't know. I don't know. But I'm not going to stand by here at home or on the opens or wherever we're fishing. I'm not. I'm not going to get beat by it. I'm going to feel like I know it just as good mm-hmm. as other people. And I've always liked that. You know, I've always like, you know, if you look back the the it used to be like you had guys that had techniques, right? Like Keith Combs, the crankbait fisherman. Absolutely. Uh, Kevin Van Dam, crankbait. Je- he's a power fisherman. Power fisherman. Yep. Jerkbait, square bill, crankbait, lipless. Yep. I mean, he's going to throw something moving. He, you know, uh, Mark Rose was like one of the OG ledge hammers, big worm, Carolina rig, like awesome dude to figure that out. And he he kicked a lot of tail and won a lot of money doing that before other people could figure that out. That was a new technique, ledge fishing, 2D sonar, whatever he was using. Randy? No, I'm talking about Mark Rose, too. Oh, Randy Haynes. He, Randy Haynes, another one. He took some money. Bunch of dudes, man, new, figured out the ledge game, started winning tournaments. Hackney, shallow water beatdown. If it's a shallow, if the fish are shallow, Jason Christie. I mean, there was guys that had their their techniques and tournaments would cycle into their wheelhouse. And now, to be competitive on the pro level, you need to be a lot more versatile and you got to know forward face somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sports, you know, I just, it's crazy. It's changing, me. it's adapting. <sighs> Crazy, but man. I don't like the negativity. That's that's no, that's my thing. I don't like that. Just, I don't like that. I don't like that, man. And the whole like bass live is boring. I mean, honestly, no, we talk dude. That, dude, like fishing kind of boring. Fork to watch. was amazing. That's what I'm saying. Like, fork I, was entertaining. Nobody, you, you guys didn't How enjoy about watching ten freaking century belts. How about ten of them? Uh, the clip with Justin Hammer, he caught a twelve. That that was awesome. That How twelve about, kicked his ass. 
10. 10. Yep. Yep. I wonder without four fights are how many there would be. Mm, not that many. Would have been very entertaining. Yeah, there's the argument of watching a guy in the back of his head. Well, I mean, that's what that's what you watch anyway, whether he's throwing a frog, a spinnerbait, a crankbait. And to be fair, at four, these guys were catching them all kinds of ways. Yeah. Yeah, guys catching nine pounds on beds. Now, the guys that did really well were that, yeah, they're uniform phase RR. How about, uh, you know, Trey McKinney going and flipping a dock, breaking Justin, his freaking rod and boat flipping a six pounder? Justin Hammer caught a big one out of, from under a walkway. But it's. Just four phase sonar. Nope, that's it. He can't be good at anything else, right? Man, when he freaking when he freaking boat flipped that fish, I was like, dude, if that was me, I'd have been <laughs> <laughs> broke my freaking rod tip, and I and I know everybody's complaining about four phase sonar, and that there I know that I'm 19, and I know everybody's gonna blank say that the only reason I won is because of four phase sonar. I'd have boat flip that joker rod tip broken, and I'd have been like, how about that? Yeah. How about that? Oh man, I was I was happy for him. I Heck know, yeah, man. Good for that kid. Yeah. He's he's good at it. Yeah. He's gonna continue to be good at it. Mm-hmm. Uh anyway, that's our tangent on Ford Face. So I'm sure we'll get into it with our guests we have. So Wednesday we're recording with Caleb Summerall. Caleb Summerall. He's probably <laughs> we'll see what he's got to say about it. He had a good event at Fork though. He did. Yep. He did. He had a sl- he had a slow start and then like all of a sudden he started lighting up the yeah. bass track. Uh shallow hammer. Dude can catch him. Um, I I can I'm gonna guess his stance is he's not really a fan of it. Probably we'll, not. We'll ask him, but he's coming in studio. I talked to him today. He's like, I'm I said, a little intimidated by Kobe. He beat the hell out of us. He's, he's stout, a stout, dude. stout boy, and he's from Louisiana. Not good. He's stout boy, and he's a little crazy. <laughs> and he's a little crazy. I partied with him before. He's I little, like Caleb though, crazy. man. He's he, cool. He's I, cool. I don't really know him that well, but man, he, he seems like a guy really, no, you know, like man. him and Lee and. You know, that'd be really cool. Yeah, man, he's been on our list to try to get, and he just so happens he's coming down here to fish um, the, the belt. belt, the $150,000 grand. Are we going to talk about that? Yeah, we need to touch on that. So, anyway, we'll have him in studio. That episode will air <laughs> probably Thursday or Friday. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, man, Brandon Belt Fishing. I think it's still called the $100,000 grand slam. Um, But it's going to be more money than that this year. So, first year it came around. <laughs> Big deal, 300-something boats, I believe. Second year it came around, last year, I believe it drew probably close to that, 200, two, upper 200s, mid 200s? I don't remember. It was over 200. Maybe 220. I don't know. Two over 200. It wasn't 300. And, you know, this year it's – we don't know what we're going to have yet, but it's – It's not going to go up much. Uh, You should have already registered if you're going to register. Do you have to sign up before you can be in official practice, which started today? Yeah. Okay. Well, you have to sign up. Like, you can sign up tonight and practice tomorrow. Okay. But you talked to Carter. I think. I talked I talk to my man Carter. Um, with with Brandon Belt Fishing. With Brandon Belt Fishing. What did he say? As of yesterday, was it yesterday? Mm-hmm. We had 112. 12 votes. Um, I literally have, I, I, I literally, I, I'm speech, I literally don't know. I'm shocked. I mean, I literally don't understand. We were worried. Why it's like, dude, we need to sign up because they were they were going to cap the field yeah. three twenty five. We're worried like, about getting signed he's up. He's like, we need to sign up, man. They're they're going to cap the field. We're not going to get in. And I was kind of joking, like, ah, Brandon's not going to let us sit this one out. <laughs> and he's like, it ain't up to Brandon. He get three hundred twenty five. They're not going to have three hundred twenty six. And I'm uh, seriously thinking that they have a shot because the event. Okay, the first two years has been in January. Terrible weather, cold. They put this joker in March. Nice weather. Well, <laughs> it might be a little bit bad weather in a tournament. I know. He's so unlucky, dude. <laughs> he's so unlucky. We might be getting rained on the first two days and Northwest win the final day. But uh, no, Thursday's fine. Friday is thunderstorms, and he, I'll be sitting on the bank. I'll be out there fishing. My, no, my line will be. He's a chicken, dude. Sh- my line will be like this. He's he's more scared of I'm just telling him there's a nader. They'll nader. be seeing up. They'll be going to see me out there scoping that spinner rod like this, son. Yeah, line floating. 112, guys. Yeah, I want to know in the un- comments I why mean. y'all think that is. Bro, okay, here's what's weird to me. It's, His regular season events are a more expensive entry fee, and they don't... They doubled their numbers from last year. 
Yeah, they're averaging one forty one fifty through the first two regular season events, and they don't pay. This tournament pays out more money. This thing is like less entry fee, more money. Less entry fee, more money, and it's it's a, for a charity. I just <clears throat> I don't get it. If I hope for some reason they get eighty ninety votes, some just get to two hundred, get it, close somehow, some way. Is it conflicting with something? It, no, it's not, it wouldn't matter. If it is, what what would it be? I don't know. I don't either. Caleb Summerall's freaking fishing. He's the Elite Series Pro. Yeah. I, yeah, I the elites can fish it. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Invitational guys are coming back. Yep. To fish it. I have no idea, dude. I mean, I know there's an open on Santee, but there's not that many dudes in it that would fish it. No, there's you not. Know, maybe all, that definitely ain't it. Three or four teams. Let, let us know why. I'm literally, I, I wish I had eight guests. I don't even it's, have guess. It's in March. You can literally win this tournament going down the bank with a sink. First place, how much cash? Sixty grand cash. Sixty thousand dollars in cash in a freaking premium basket. Ninety thousand dollar basket. We're talking about a hundred and probably thirty to fifty thousand. Okay, you're win. gonna sell the you're gonna sell the basket back to Ross Motorsports for what? Seventy. I don't know. Let's say at minimum you win one twenty. Yeah. Golly, dude. You can, I'm serious, dude. I'm serious. And if you win, you probably want some day money too. Somebody I mean, can God, go down dang. the bank with the Cinco and win this tournament. That's dude. why I saw it in March, and I was like. That's awesome. They're going to get more numbers. Yeah. I don't like it. They ain't getting more numbers. See, and that's why, that's another reason we went and tried to catch what we could in champs because our fisher could easily be gone. We could easily weigh in 10 pounds a, a day next week. It's, the this spawn week. is like, it's you going had to, on. It, I mean, basically. Those 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 guys say, oh, man, you know, did you hope you save some for water temperature 65 degrees. Hope you save some for bell. Absolutely no, we not. <laughs> we we stuck everything. Save a thing, dude. Not nothing. You Not one. You just don't know. Raven Fish, you have no idea when your fish are going to be on your spots or not. Yep. You don't know. We, they have ghosted us so far this year. Uh, all the time. I will not be shocked at all on Thursday. Or they're there, and we pull up, and we fire in there, and they go, yep, they want gone. nothing to do with us. See you. So, how, how long was the episode? Uh, we're at an hour. 40, Dang. 47 minutes. I'm shocked. I didn't think we were going to make this long of an episode. But that was cool. We got to tell them the story, and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Warren it's cool to kind of walk through. We got the Warren Hole poachers. And... <laughs> I mean, it was a good episode, dude. Yeah. No. But anyway, I just, I don't know. I feel bad for Brandon. For Brandon Belt. And... I mean, it's a big deal. Look, if you're not fishing a tournament, you don't want to fish a tournament, uh, I think there's still ways you can participate in the charity. Yeah, um, for that's sure. That's the biggest dude. thing for me. He's like, no, the Calcutta, the he, Calcutta for sure. He raises a bunch of money. They got all kinds of auction items and stuff like that. And I don't, I don't really know how they're doing it this year. I should probably be more in tune with that. But uh, go to Brandon Belt Fishing's Facebook and just look and see if if you didn't want to fish a tournament because you don't want to pay a thousand for entry fee or eight hundred. Um, participate in the charity. Do something. Jump in yeah. the Calcutta. Uh, I have. Did we donate anything? I wasn't asked to. I usually don't need a trip, but I don't know how they're doing stuff this year. Anyways, guys, um, man, I hate that. I really do. Yeah. Thankfully, they're having an, another one like Brandon came on here and told you about. Not, well, that's no, why I hate it for them because it's guaranteed. That one's going to draw. Which one? The other Grand Slam they're having. Ooh. I, watch it. what that one draws. Full field. We're going. Watch what that one draws. We're going. So... We're going, but uh, yeah, man, we'll we'll see what happens. Once again, man, uh, since we're, I'm assuming we're about to wrap it up, sure. Unless there's something else you want to talk about. Much, much appreciation for all the sports because, man, the the negativity on our end from the people that we it wasn't that much. So, no, no, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. The people that we surround ourselves with, and our friends, and our family, and all of our the people that follow along the podcast, and you know, with me and Shane individually as well. Man, thank y'all because we have hardly no negativity come our way, um, and we appreciate the respect from our fellow competitors and all the people that surround yeah. us. Like it, that that's what it, it feels good. No doubt, that's what feels good, man. Is all the respect and uh, you know, because that's the way I've always been. That's the way Shane's always been. That's the way we've always been. When someone else wins and someone else does good, does good, and um, it just feels good to get one knocked out like that. We were due. We one more. Like, we need one more. I'd like to go back to back. Golly, somebody. 
Woo! <laughs> back to back. Man, I don't know. I don't know. I, think, I don't know. That'd be insane. I'm telling you right now. I don't even know. God would have to be like, here you go, bro. Mm-hmm. Right there. Here you go. Three-day events are tricky. They're tough, man. They're really, really and tough. And we've got different weather every day. Every day is different Different weather. wind, different weather. They're dropping the bottom out of this joker as we speak. Yes, they are. It's changing. Three, four daily. inches a and day. It's, it's March, man. It's March. It changes every day. It changes. Rayburn changes daily anyway. This place is crazy. But this time of year, choo, what? Yep. I had somebody tell me, man, dang Rayburn locals, they got such an advantage. Well, not in March. I don't know, man. They're dropping the lake about four inches a day. It's changing fast, man. Every day. Changing every day. so fast. Changing so fast. I, yeah. They're messing up the spawn by doing that. But we don't even need to get in that topic. But they don't care uh, about the spawn. Video. Your man, Taylor. Oh, we got a freaking 39 and a half pound video coming. So that was that was cool, though. We were like, it's like, should we bring a GoPro? <laughs> And we kind of knew we were going to catch him. We didn't know we were going to catch him like that. We kind of felt like, oh, I think we're going to have a good day. Yeah. You know, we're going to be up there, mid-20s, maybe 30. You know, we felt like 30 was coming. <laughs> Not going to lie. Not going to lie. We felt like the op- – we knew the potential was there. Let's yeah. put it that way. We knew the potential was there to bust 30. That's yeah. what we were going for. We wanted to bust 30. Yeah. But anyway, he's like, hey, you, you going to do GoPro? Shane's like, <laughs> yep. absolutely. I was like, you got a mount? It's like it's already mounted. I, was like, I already got it on I said, my. I got a GoPro. You got a charger? Yep, let's do it. And we filmed that. Put it on that night. Yeah. We're going to get that edited and put out on the Juice podcast channel. On the Juice Oh, yeah, we got. Uh, we're going to get some merch, too. I mean, we're working on that probably today. I'm oh, gonna... yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you reminded me. The guys that, the guys that, uh, that we gave hats to. Uh, Chris Bowers. I got them all. I got your list. I got your addresses. I have your hats. I have them. I'm sorry I haven't shipped them yet. It's been a nightmare trying to find a box that fits a hat without squishing it. Mm. Um, so we ordered some. Cali boxes. ordered some. Yep. Some boxes. That yeah, fits, and I'm calling fits our hat. guys over at Six Cents. They're coming, dude. We didn't Six. forget about you. I got them. They're like sitting on my kitchen counter. My wife is like, what are you doing with these hats? I'm like, I got to ship them out when I get boxes. She's like, do they have to sit here? I said, yes, they have to sit here so I can be reminded daily that I got it. So I didn't forget about y'all. But, yeah, we got some hats. We're trying to figure out how to sell them. Uh, because we're not that smart. Are we going to, like, have our own website? Yeah, we're going to have a website. I don't know, dude. Can you just sell them on Facebook? No, nah, we'll have our own website. We're, we're gonna go a website. website? I don't want to have a... I don't, you have to pay to host a website and all that? Nah, it's going to be simple. We're going to figure it out, guys. We're going to get y'all some freaking hats, hoodies, shirts. Uh, we're last gonna thing. It out. Juice is going to the classic. Oh, yeah, we're going to the Bassmaster Classic. We said that. We have not even booked our hotel. <laughs> we don't even have a hotel. <sighs> I don't even know. Remember we might have an exciting. Oh, it's at, it's at Grand. I, I don't know. I don't want you know. I want to say anybody's name yet, but we might. We have a potential sponsor for the trip to the classic. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal because the juice is like we don't do the. We haven't done the sponsor thing. The main reason is, I personally don't like the. I don't like. I don't know how to say this. I don't. The way that we do sponsors, the way we do sponsor plugs in our industry. I don't. I don't like it. I don't think it's the right way to do it. I think there's a better way to do it. I don't know what that is. No, we don't. Um, you know, I I think it needs to be authentic. And uh, that's just me. And I don't know. We're trying to figure that all out. That's why we haven't really brought in sponsors. That's why I haven't even monetized the channel yet. Which I know why. It's like, what are you doing? Why well, we need to do that? Well, I don't want commercials. Maybe they're already playing <laughs> commercials on it. But I just, I'm just saying. Like, anyway, we have a potential first juice sponsor uh and they might i think we're going to start out with something simple like you know sponsor sponsor the trip to the classic because i think that's going to be a good one and we need to be there yep and we're going we're going we might be sleeping in a truck but we're going i want to watch jason christie win it with no scope oh that'd be awesome he's gonna go no nah, dude's gonna be in the he did it last time back up pocket he did it at hartwell when he won been her bait. Yeah, he probably won't scope. Anyway, we'll keep you posted on that, but we'll have another episode this week, and uh, then we'll get that video out of... Um, somebody leave in the comments, what is the... We were talking about this at lunch a minute ago. What is the largest bag, tournament bag, team tournament bag caught on a GoPro? On a GoPro. I'm curious. Till next time, guys. 
See y'all. Thank you.